What's up guys, this is Characters and welcome to The Carrot Show. This is the show where every week I will be reviewing a session played by one of my students or a member here on GrinderSchool.com and I will be awarding carrot points, good plus carrot points for good actions when the student does something that I agree with and bad negative carrot points when the student does something that I deem wrong or spewy or too timid or whatever kind of bad adjective you can you can ascribe to a poker decision. Um, Jim has not been doing very well. I purposefully chose these names because they only have like three or four letters and also I don't think I have any students with these names. So yeah, I don't want to like offend anyone by actually saying, hey, well, my student X has minus 417 points in the cartoon video. So I was very careful with that. These aren't real people. These are just like the green man, the blue man, and the red man. And they're not actually going to be in the show. They're just the cartoon. And the people in the show are going to be you guys on grinderschool.com. So if you want to be in this show, um, send me a PM and send me, get a video uploaded somewhere. And it should just basically be a video of you playing two to four tables of No Limit Hold'em 6 Max Cash Games. And the HUD should be visible, it should be nice, clear quality. And yeah, get that sent to me and I will see if I can get you on the show. I'm prioritizing the students who have volunteered for this first, but there's every chance I'll be extending this out to the wider Greater Grander School community very soon. So definitely, if you're interested in participating, then you know, come along for the show and maybe you'll win a prize or something. I don't know. I haven't decided what the prizes are yet. Um, but, you know, don't take the competition part of this too seriously. It's mainly instructive, obviously. But I think it'd be fun if we make it a little bit competitive and award some points for good spots, spots played well, spots played badly. So the idea is going to be that I'm going to pause the video um, every time that I think there's a worthwhile decision to be made by the student. And, I'm, and when I pause it, I'm going to say what I think the best line is and how many carrot points each action is going to be worth. So for instance, if there's a spot where Hero faces a 3-bet and he has pocket 7s and he's out of position and it's a big 3-bet against a Breg with 60 BB stacks, then folding is going to be worth like 1 carrot point because it's really obvious. Calling is going to be worth minus 3 and 4-betting is going to be worth minus 5 or something like that. So basically the worse the decision, the more minus points you get. If you make a really standard easy choice, you'll either get 0 or 1 for it. But if you actually make a play that impresses me because you do something that most people would make a mistake with or many people might go wrong with, but you do it right, then you're going to earn yourself more like 3 or 4 or 5 carat points. If you do something like incredible that I really like, you might even get like up to 10. I think the maximum carat points I'm going to award are going to be like plus 10 and minus 10, but there might be an exception that if you do something that's so horrific, you might get like minus 60 just so you never do that again. You know, they say once been twice shy, the best lessons you learn are the ones you get scorn for and all that kind of thing. So yeah, but anyway, I don't want to like make people feel terrible, so maybe I'll cap it at minus 10. But yeah, the point is not to care if you get a good or a bad score, really, although we will be comparing them at the end, naturally, and seeing who the ultimate champion is and who the ultimate loser is. But don't care about that too much. Care more about the instruction that's going to come out of this, because obviously you're going to get feedback on why a decision is worth X carat points, and that's the that's why we're here. Hopefully this will be entertaining, it'll be fun, it'll be a laugh, but also, you know, we're here to learn, so I'll make sure that I explain every decision that the student does right or wrong and why it's good or bad. Uh, there won't be any guests with me on this series, I don't think. It'll just be me basically reviewing the play of these students, so maybe this is a little bit misleading to have them at podiums here. They're not actually going to be here in the studio doing the show with me, but, you know, whatever. I say studio because it's like my poker office. It's not really a studio, I just like the way that sounds. Anyway, let's get into... The video, yeah, it's not like Grinder School has its own actual studio. That would be really cool if we did like a baller pad to record videos in. Doesn't really work though, given that we're all in different parts of the world as instructors. So today I would like to not introduce, so to speak, because he's not with me, but contestant number one is my student Jeff, who I've been working with for a few weeks, guy from um, America who's playing um, subsequently on black chip poker because obviously no access to sites like stars or whatnot. So black chip poker is going to be our skin for this video. The video is high quality. You can see here all the tables are, you know, nicely tiled. The HUD is nicely visible. You know, get this to me in this kind of format if you want to be on the show. Make sure the video is nice and crisp like this and nice and clear so everyone can see what's going on. Um, so here I've got contestant one, Jeff, and basically I'm just going to be going like this, minus eight, minus six, plus 17, whatever, awarding the points like that. Let's take off the underline though. 
and then at the end we're going to be tallying up the points, giving Jeff a final score, and then next week we'll have a new contestant on down here, contestant number two, and we'll get, be giving him a score, and we'll just be seeing who basically wins the ultimate prize of carrots. Maybe I will like order you 10 kilos of carrots enough for like six months, and you can freeze them and stuff and use them for all that time. Maybe that'll be the prize. Although I don't want to get you guys too excited yet. I'm not sure yet. Right, let's go. Let's roll the video, and without further ado, let's begin episode number one of The Carrot Show. Hopefully we can learn a bit while we're at it. So, a decision like this, right off the bat we have a spot that's worth one carrot point, but I missed the mark on not being able to pause the video before it happened. We face an open for my 2117 on the button, a min open. And honestly, like this can't be too bad to call with 10-5 suited, it's kind of close. I think it's like somewhere between a call and it depends if you, what you think about your population here. Um, it depends how often they actually fold to 3-bets, like whether or not you want to have like a polar or linear 3-bet range here. I think on this site people just tend not to fold very much from what I know, so I might just start off linear here if my recollection of, of this site is correct. Um, I'm trying to remember whether this is actually ACR or whether it's carbon. I think blackjack poker is a carbon skin. I could be wrong on that. Maybe someone can correct me who actually plays this site. I should really know these things because I teach people on it all the time. But anyway, um, I'm going to award for calling here. I'm going to say that's plus one carat point. It's definitely reasonable. Folding is also plus one carat point. I think it's really close. And I'm going to say we should start off with a, a linear range here against this population because it's 10 and L on a weaker site. Um, I know this site's fairly soft. I don't remember exactly... How soft is it? Wait, no, if it's ACR, it's probably a little bit less soft. Anyway, people don't fold to 3-bits on ACR very much. People don't fold on Carbon or uh, Bovada either. Obviously, it's not Bovada because they're fish. So I think we should start off linear in this spot, honestly. So I award 3-bet in this hand, probably minus 1. I don't think it's very good. So I'm just going to start off. Jeff decides to call this spot. I'm going to start off nice and kind and award plus 1 carat point right away for that decision. So off to a flying start, scoring the maximum in every possible spot so far, which is good. On this flop, I mean, I think that we've just flopped too well to, to fold here, so it's definitely going to be a check call. It's not like we're over the moon about it, but I don't really want to turn this showdown value into a bluff, so I'm going to award plus two carat points for a check call here, uh, minus one for a check raise, and minus three for a check fold, because I think check folding would be really bad when we flop this, this well, basically against a really wide are perceived to be probably quite wide button range, so it's a standard check call, so we'll go ahead and just the plus two carat points for that. And on this king turn, I mean, you can fold, honestly, you're at a point in your range where you have a lot of better hands, you have draws that you'd rather continue with, that you could raise with here, definitely have a raising range here, I'd raise like a bunch of two pair, a bunch of like king queen, a bunch of good draws as bluff sets for value, obviously, and with 10-5 now, I would just be check folding, but the turn checks back, and now the question is do we want to turn our hand into a bluff on this 9 of Hearts River? I think we don't really have very much air in our range here at all, I think we're very very close to the bottom of our range, and Villain can for sure have Queen X, so I actually like turning this into a bluff. Um, we don't block any flushes or anything, but I don't think that flushes are just checking back that turn so quickly very often, so I think Villain's range here is mostly some better hands, like better 5, 6s through jacks, Queen X, all of which we can make fold, and I think we're so far down in our range on this board when you think about the amount of flushes and stuff we have here, I think this should probably be turned into a bluff. Okay, we could have some 4x as well, but we're fairly low down with a 5 with such a bad kicker, so I think we should actually go ahead and bet about 65, 70 here, just turn this into a bluff and expect them to fold enough worse hands, enough better hands that it's better than checking. I think we can gain a lot of EV by actually turning this hand into a bluff because it showed him value is not really great here. I mean, it will win a decent amount, but not loads. And we can just keep checking when we have like weak queen X, when we have like pocket tens or whatever. So I'm going to award plus four for a river bet here because it's going to be a really good bet to find. I'm going to award, um, if he checks the river, I'm going to award minus one for that because I think you need to be turning this hand into a bluff. And I'm going to award a check fold. Um, just minus one because you should check fold if you check here and if you check calls or check raises it's going to be like minus lots across that bridge when we come to it. I don't hate a check raise necessarily I guess, I don't, I really hate a check call obviously. So minus one for not turning your hand into a bluff on that river, I don't think it's a big deal. And some people watching this will like disagree with what I'm saying and be like no, you shouldn't turn that into a bluff. Well, 
you know what, I can't guarantee you I'm making objectively the correct decision in every single spot. I'm just scoring as best as I can. Whoa, folded threes in the hijack with... Okay, you've got mainly regs ahead, I can forgive that. In fact, that's not a bad fold when you've just got regs behind you. So more plus one for folding threes in the hijack there on a tough table. Um, so I'm just making the best, the fairest scoring I can. It's the first time I'm doing it. So please don't feel like I'm being harsh intentionally or whatever. I'm just basically trying to trying to be a fair judge. And obviously, yes, I'm a coach and I'm an instructor and have a fair bit of experience playing and teaching poker. But it doesn't mean that I'm going to be right about every decision um, that is made. This is a clear fold. You don't get any carrot points for just folding five four off versus a 2.5x open in the blind, it's just too easy. So you have to do something generally like that could be messed up by a reasonable player or you know, a, an improving player to actually award carrot points. You can't get a point just for doing something completely mundane and routine. <clears throat> we elect not to steal their blind versus blind against a 2013 with a suited 5-3. 3 20% so far, so I think that's reasonable. You probably don't want too wide of a small blind range there. I think that gets plus one because some people would open that, and I don't think it's good against someone that's been active 3 betting already. Uh, queen 8, you go for fast fold there, or we think about taking fast fold on table 4. Um, against these two blinds, again, I would fold queen 8 off. I don't think it's quite good enough. We're going to award plus one for a, a fold here because some people would open this, and minus one for a raise. And if you limp the button, you get like minus six. Um, King Jack on table 2 facing an under the gun 4x against the fish, just a fold, plus 1 for folding here, do anything else, it's going to be pretty bad. Cross that bridge if we come to it, I'm sure we won't. Okay. Plus 1, and if he folds a queen 8 here, another plus 1. Oh, it goes for the raise, so it's going to be minus 1. I don't think it's good against um, 2 blinds, like 3 bet 20%, 3 bet 11%, I think it's a little bit too loose. Not majorly too loose or anything. The minus one's a little harsh there, honestly, but got to be harsh sometimes. I was generous before. And then we fold ace three against the 3017 fish. Um, honestly, this kind of player is usually going to be quite fair to fold post love. I think we should just, and he's not got that high of e-pit, so we're going to word minus one for that. I think we should be opening any ace against the 3017 um, because we'll be able to see bet the flop really well. Um, and get fold equity and also we'll be able to flop good stuff and also we have a fair bit of pre-flop fold equity against the 3017 it's not like he's through the roof here over 49 hands you know he's not got an enormous v-pip so and he's not three bet yet that's the all crucial thing very low three bet percentage so definitely you want to open any ace there for sure very standard c bet i think on table four so no points for that because it's just obvious on that dry texture with no showman value i think we can see our whole range on the jack turn i would just give up here because you don't want to like just start off barreling this turn with your entire range, and that's what you're doing if you use zero equity hands like Queen Eight. Just have no equity. Um, a fair bit of his range will be King X to call the flop, so it's not like in a vacuum. It's going to be that plus EV to barrel anyway. And long term EV wise, it's really bad because you're going to end up just bluffing like your whole air range on the turn, which is going to be huge given that you see by the flop with pretty much everything. So I think I'm going to award minus two here for a turn bet and plus one for a check. Okay, so far so good. Mid open the king seven. Um, yeah, I think it's okay against like a probably a fair fold fish and then a guy that's not three bet yet. The key here is that no one's three bet here on table two, so it's fine. I, one of my students made a point that I don't often enough describe which table I'm actually talking about, which I need to do more. I wouldn't see bet this because like this board is terrible and you have no equity. I'm actually going to give a see bet here minus three because if you start see betting. Um, like just king high one over card, no backdoor draws or anything on a board against 2218 that connects well with them. Your C bet range is way out of whack for like how strong you are. You don't have great range advantage on this texture. Like, okay, you have a stronger range, but he just hits this board really well. So his range is strong here. You don't have that much fold equity. Um, you don't want to see bet zero equity hands for both short term EV reasons and long term EV reasons. So I'm definitely going to give that a minus three if that finger hits the bet button as it looks like it's going to. So an unfortunate turn of events there, but that could be a leak. And one thing I'm going to do in these videos as well is say what leaks I think the student has and what things they should probably look to work on. Through bet is queen, which seems pretty standard, but inverse cut off, no carrot points for that. And I would just bet the flop also seems standard. Nothing for that either. So it's just obvious. On this turn, um, what you're going to get three streets against here, is this a reg? I don't think it's a reg because he wasn't full stacked. So against the fish, I would just bet three times here for value. I think your hand's too good to not. It's 26-14. He's not full stacked. Just go value, value, value. There's a lot of combos of um, ace 
nine is ten is jack a say a seven is five is two six three these are going to be like more combos than the other ones that beat us there are not that many combos of better hands here he calls flop really fast as well which is not indicative that he has a set or something normally people think about if they're going to like slow play there so i would just go for three streets of value it's a little bit thin depends what the river is as well if the river is like a jack maybe not um but on a blank river like a six or a four or something like that definitely going for three streets so betting turn is worth one point here checking turn worth minus three and then we give up turn on table two and then we get there on the river so we definitely need to value bet very easy value bet i would say if he checks to us plus one for making that if he bets himself, it's going to be a call, plus one for making that as well. Anything else will be minus points. When the fish shoves here, you have to call on table one. Um, you're just getting a really good price. You have to call like 485 into a pot that's already like 1374 plus 485. It's like 1860, basically, you're calling into. So, I mean, because you get your 485 back, like you need like 26% equity. You have that against the fish. He's going to shove worse top pair and stuff like that easily. Um, so got to call I think I know he's passive it's a little bit annoying but you're going to have 26% equity you probably don't have over 50% no but you have over 26% so table 1 um, I'm going to say that calling is going to be worth 3 carat points it's definitely a good spot to find a call I'm going to award minus 4 for a fold here I think it's a pretty big mistake people may end up with negative totals because I'm overly harsh we check back the river there I think we're missing a value bet um, so I'm going to award minus 2 for missing the value bet Man, I feel like such a bad guy, so I just awarded like four minuses in a row. And if we call here, plus two. If we fold, minus three. Yeah, plus two. So we get those two carry points back right away. So no harm done there, really. It's all good, Jeff. Oh, are we going to call? Oh, no. Oh, it's not all good. I spoke too soon. We're going to fold, which I really don't like. Because you need 26% equity and you're against a weaker player who can for sure be shoving worse top pair. You need to actually think you're good less than a quarter of the time there to fold. And it's just not going to be the case with this queen. He's going to have the same hand a bunch. He's going to have a stack ace 10 sometimes. Who knows? Fish show up with weird stuff. Yes, you will lose there. I think more than half the time. You're not going to lose 75% of the time. Definitely not. Just bear in mind equity needed there. You really have to have to think about the amount of equity you actually need to, to call before you go ahead and make that fold. So definitely consider that target in your head nice and clear. And that's the first step in the decision, and only then would you want to decide whether you have that much EV or not. Like, if you had a bigger sample and he was super, super passive, I could see maybe finding a hero fold there. But definitely not just against a random fish over a small sample, because you're just going to run into so many so many hands you beat for that price. That, yeah, if you're betting turn there, you're definitely bet calling turn. And fish will, like, if they min-raise you there, you can be way more afraid, and it's much closer to a fold. I don't know whether it is or not, maybe. Um, but when they shove, they can just be saying, oh, well, look how much money's in the pot. I'm committed. I have a strike. Ship it. They just do that. Um, at least often enough, you'd have over 25%. So, yeah. And there'll be a bit of variance to this show as well. I mean, you may play really well at the end of your session, but I don't get time to review that part and you make mistakes at the start. So when you send me these videos, make sure you're playing well from the beginning. Like, try and play your best game, basically. Don't like obsess over it and like make like seven videos and try and send the best one because the prize will just be a bag of carrots and you might not want that that much anyway. But it's more for instructional purposes. So actually, the worse you play, the more you get out of it. Um, the competitive element's more for fun. So you're basically trying to get as much out of it as you can. So if you want to send me a horrific session for me to give minus minus minus, um, that's fine. Like, you'll get a lot out of that as well, guys. Like definitely consider, you know, what you're getting out of it. You want to win the competition, sure, it's a bit of fun, that'd be nice, but the more important thing is learning, because I'm not awarding big thousands of dollar prizes for this. Um, Jack-6, uh, it's kind of close, I mean, yeah, fish and a net, and you just complete getting an amazing price in the blind. I don't hate it, I'm just going to award zero either way there, I think it's really close between calling and folding. I probably fold, honestly, I think your hand just flops like crap, um, like really badly. There's just so few good flops there, three-way out of position yeah i don't hate the call because the price is so amazing and one player has a fish but i also don't like it so i'm not gonna award anything for that i prefer a fold slightly with a hand that bad i mean if you had a slightly better hand i'd definitely call there but it's not a big deal it's close i like the check on the flop we make it straight so not leading with a gut shot there actually is i'm gonna award a plus one for that because some people would lead as a semi bluff with the gut shot in that spot and it's just not good enough because you don't have enough full equity three-way. You have like a tight player there 
um, and you have a fish, you know, both of them together are going to have connected with this flop pretty well, or someone has. So you just don't have enough fold equity to lead. On the turn, you have to lead, and I would lead pretty big against the fish. So sizing is going to come into it here. If you bet close to pot, you're going to get like three points for like really good sizing. If you bet big here, if you bet like two thirds pot, I'm just going to give you like one point. If you bet any less than that, you might start to lose points. And if you don't bet, you're definitely going to lose points because you need to bet here for value. Okay, he bets, so that changes things. Do you call, do you raise? Um, you want to keep the fish in the hand here. I don't think there's too much value to raising against the reg. He should be folding most of his worst hands here. And he's not good. He will, he will have a set sometimes, but I think keeping the fish in the hand is probably more valuable. When no one bets the flop, probably no one has a flush draw too often either. So I'm not so concerned with the flush. I mean, it's close, honestly. Maybe the fish still comes along. I doubt the fish comes along with worse hands here, actually, if you raise very often. So he kind of caps his range on the flop by checking. I'm going to say calling slightly better than raising. Two for calling. A one, one point for calling, zero for raising, but it's no real big deal. I think it's quite close as well. Like, raising's not bad, certainly. Okay, so we give plus one for that. And then on the river, you've got to value that, obviously. Sizing-wise, I go fairly big, honestly, because I don't think you're getting called here by... Well, I don't know, maybe his range is quite elastic. He could have, like, nines, tens, and stuff like that that you want to get called by. Okay, let's just go... Uh, I'll just give you, like, one point for betting, like, a reasonable size here. Um, for not messing up the sizing, basically, is worth a point. Um, table 1, I think we call it the big blind multi-way to a fairly small open, which seems fine with queen 8 suited, and I would just check, evaluate. Oh, would I lead this flop? Ugh, my hand's pretty weak. i check, evaluate the flop. I think there's some circumstances under which you can actually fold the flop, like if it goes bet and then call, or bet and then raise, or something like that. So I'd probably just check all this flop and go from there. I'm not super thrilled. But I don't think against two regs we're doing stupendously better by putting money in against their calling range than we are their check their betting range. So I think check calling's fine. Like the guy in position can even stab like bluffs and stuff if it checks to him. And people do see bet too much in a lot of these games. So I think check call is good on table one, two points for that. If you find a check call. Um if you check fold that flop, probably minus three points. If you check raise that flop minus nine, it would be really bad. The thing was not money resting on this, or people would be like sweating so much um, watching it. Okay, plus two for the check call. That's good. Especially against the stabber who can have a fairly wide range there. And I missed the bet size there. I was going to give you like plus one just for a reasonable bet size. So let me just see what that was on table three. 108. Yeah, that seems good to me. We get plus one for that. So redeeming the score, Jeff. Redeeming it. Decent start, then a shaky period, and now things are looking up again. So I don't know what your total is. I think it's like slightly negative or around zero right now. That's okay. That's a solid start. You're not expected to score like loads of positive points. In fact, if you guys get a positive score, that's definitely like encouraging. A positive score would be really good. If not, then you know plenty to work on. Don't worry about it. But don't think that getting a minus score is like horrific. I would probably, f mm, yeah, I guess you should call that turn again. I mean, ten x isn't super likely. There are a lot of draws. I think plus one for <clears throat> just finding that call and turn again on table one is good. Sorry guys, I'll try and make sure I specify which table I'm talking about in case it's not obvious. And on this river I would check fold, like king jack gets there, ace jack, stuff like that gets there as well, and any ace high heart draw gets there, so all the a lot of air is now gone from his range, so folding river here is going to be worth plus two carat points, it's definitely good. Fold to find calling minus three, and if you raise river, I mean, I don't really understand why, because your opponent's range is pretty polarised and quite strong when he has value, so minus 10 probably for Raising River. That's harsh, minus 8. I think Raising River would be horrific in this spot, though I think his range is really polar. So this would be a fold for me. Plus 2 for a fold. Pocket 2 is flat under the gun open, looks fine, definitely folding this flop. If you do anything else, there's going to be minuses. If not, it's just obvious, I'm not going to award a point for folding deuces on King 8-7. Oh, the call, not the call, he makes the call, not good. Don't like the call. I'm um, going to have to give minus three for that. So yeah, I mean, it's a spot where, basically, your opponent has a has a bunch of air before the river, sure, like he can have like eight, nine, jack, nine, which you can still have on the river. King, jack, and heart draws forever, a lot of those have got there. They've made a value hand that's either checking or value betting. So air has been removed from his range quite substantially. 
So at that point, you're then bluff catching only against Jack 9, 8, 9, if he has those at all, or if he even flats those pre against the end of the gun open, which he may well not, or you're bluff catching against like <clears throat> some other heart draw, like I don't even know what other heart draws, 8, 7 of hearts or something like that, 9, 8 of hearts. Not many combos, whereas there are quite a lot of King Jack in his range, so King Jack suited, pocket fives, 10x that randomly bet the flop for whatever reason, ace queen is in his range for sure. There's a lot more value hands and bluffs now on that specific card, so you've really got the full driver there. Um, you need about, what was the bet size? Just to look at it from a required equity point of view. Yeah, 166. Okay, I mean, the price is decent, but honestly, I don't think people bluff this size either, to be honest. And Ace X could even value bet this size for sure. It's a bit smaller. Okay, yeah, you need like 28% here. No, less, 26% to call here or something. I don't think you have it. So, yeah. Oh, 20, oh, you need, like, that's exactly half pot, actually. <clears throat> so you need 25%. I don't think you have it. I think it's still a fold. But the bet size is not as bad, actually. I mean, for that size, it's not as bad. So I'm going to downgrade that to, or upgrade that to minus two instead of minus three because it's not like the worst call in the world for that price, but it's still a fold, definitely. Almost made the fold and then second guess. So a lot of the time, um, you've been making the right play and then sort of change your mind at the last minute. I mean, it's just indecision. It's just like something you got to practice, just becoming more confident with your decisions and sticking to them when you reasoned them out. Generally, if you're changing at the last minute, it could be it could be because you're just second-guessing yourself a bit too much, or it could actually just be because you're really unsure and you just need to work on that kind of spot and post hand histories in the study group about it and ask for help and stuff like that. But the secret to that spot is basically two, twofold. First, it's like getting an idea how, how much equity you need just based on bet size. That one was nice and easy. Half pot, you always need 25%. And the second part is actually estimating your opponent's range and then sort of deciding whether or not you have that much equity or not, um, whether or not you have it or not, you know what I mean. So you're basically then realizing that a lot of his air, first of all, he's just bet three streets multi-way, so his range is just strong anyway, and then when a lot of the air disappears, his range gets even stronger, and his sizing is not very bluffy either. So I think, like, definitely a fold. There's too many reasons for why he doesn't have air there enough for you to call. Probably only has air like 10 15%, and you'd of course need him to have air like 25% of the time. I don't even know if it's as much as 10 15%, honestly. Maybe 10% is a good estimate. Um, table 4, we open, get called in two spots. I think, definitely think flop's a check, plus 3 if you check this flop, because it's not obvious. Um, but the reason it's a check is just that you're never going for three streets here against better hands. You want a pot control. The board is bone dry. Your showdown value is completely stable. It's not vulnerable to future action or cards. You can call any turn bet. You can call a flop stab. You don't really gain much by betting at all. I'd rather pot control, leave their ranges wider, and get my value on later streets. And also, I guess, balance my checking range because I will give up here when I have really bad equity like pocket sixes and stuff. So definitely like to have some ace in my checking range here. He's going for the check. Good stuff. Plus three for that. It's a nice check. Not one that's made by too many people, I don't think, at these stakes who play these games. So well done for that. And then a check call here. I mean, it's not great. Oh, this guy's really passive, actually. God, that's kind of gross. I don't mind either way here. I think this is actually really close. When the guy calls, I definitely fold. That's a really good fold. So I'm going to give plus two to that. A lot of people would miss that fold. They'd say, oh, I've got top pair. I've got to call. But not at all. Like That's another advantage to checking that when really strong action happens, like it goes bet and then call, you've got like a really easy, um, a really easy fold. Here, um, I say it's a really easy fold, but it's not an obvious fold for a lot of people to make, but it's clearly best. So 27, 22, 17 guy opens, 19, 16 calls. Yeah, I like a squeeze here. I mean, I think that you can flat as well, like, and you could squeeze like worse off suit hands as a bluff. So I don't really, I don't really mind either way in a vacuum. Like it's obviously fine to squeeze, but your hand's not going to be amazing multi way here at all with these queen off. So I think squeeze is probably just better. Just have like a, a wider um, squeeze range here. My range would be kind of polar in this spot to an extent. Like I'd mainly be squeezing my big off suit cards, and a lot of those would be kind of as a bluff. Like this is this is not for value. I don't think. I think this is kind of as a bluff. But it's not a great flat, so I'm not convinced I want the flat there. Um, you could flat it, it would be fine, and you could squeeze like King Queen, King Jack, or whatever. Um, but the squeeze is, squeeze is fine, I'm just going to award zero for it, because obviously it's not full, and calling and squeezing are both fine here, basically. I don't think it really matters too much. If I had to nitpick the very best long-term strategy, I'd probably call Ace Queen off, and um, three bit King Queen off, or Ace Jack instead as a bluff. So I could give a minus one there if I was going to be really harsh, but I don't think it's a big enough deal to. 
It's like absolutely fine and a vacuum for sure. And like I say, like your hand is not a super plus EV flat anyway. This is weird. We get four bet by the the caller. I mean, normally speaking, this can be full of shit. I don't think it's ever full of shit here because the guy's nitty. His three bets four percent. Like he's just a net. He's flatted an early position open or hijack open, and then you know your image is like nine nine on this table right now. Okay, you've got more hands with him than that. I don't know what you run overall, but. Generally speaking, he's going to have like jacks, queens, ace, king here, I would think, and maybe even slow play aces and kings sometimes as well, because he doesn't really know what he's doing when he's slow playing them. So I just fold here. Plus two for a fold. I think anything else is going to have to be minus points. Like if you had a read that this guy was like out of line or you have history, fair enough, I can't pick that up from the video. So sometimes you'll be unfairly penalized when you've actually got a read that this guy does this as a bluff, but most people won't with these stats in these positions. So fold is good. Timing out, does that count as a fold? Oh, you didn't time out, you actually hit the time back. If you timed out there, I'd have given you plus one instead of plus two, because it wouldn't have been clear that you were going to fold. But you actually hit the fold button, so well done, you get the full plus two. So good streak, eight points in a row, eight positives in a row. Let's see if we can keep this up. This is a very good streak for Jeff. For Mr. Bad Frog. So you can see it's kind of fun, guys, and you should get a lot out of this, so feel free to submit me videos and I will get to them at some point. I, I plan to do this series for a while, hopefully people enjoy it. And I might get like co-judges on the show as well and stuff, might get like Carlitos on here or another instructor and you know just make it a bit more fun. Um, 9-7 against the 4x, yeah I think that's a good fold and we get plus one for that. 9-7 suited, your implied odds aren't really there against the 4x and you do have like guys behind it. Okay they're probably not going to squeeze, they don't look that active but still, like I think against the 3x I would flat there, just play in position against the fish. Um, for implied odds reasons and positional reasons, but probably 4x, no. It's good just to fold. We give up with the 7s there, which I think is good as well. It's just a really poor hand to see bet, so I'm going to give plus 1 for that too. So good streak. That streak is now up to plus 10 in a row. Let's see if we can keep it going. Um, we open ace-jack in the cutoff, I think. Get called by the button. See bet king 8 7 I think it's fine. Pretty standard see bet. Don't really want to award a point for it, or it's getting too easy. Take it down, nice hand, all good. <clears throat> I need to like probably make these videos the same length so that it's fair on every contestant, they all get the same amount of time to, to try and rack up points. So let's say that every video is going to be 45 minutes long. It's just like a standard length of video and it gives them a good amount of time to put in enough volume to basically hopefully reduce the variance of their play a little bit and so they don't get scored on just like running bad in the sense that they just happen to make lots of mistakes in quick succession at the start or something like that. I think 45 minutes is good so I'm just going to leave this up on screen just so I don't miss the miss my cue to end the video. Uh, four is in the small blind here. Um, basically this is a really bad hand to three bet, like really bad. It, its frequent strength is awful. So when you three bet this against a fish who is like stationary, who this guy seems to be, 34 19, okay, if he's fit or full, it's not horrendous, but it's a really poor hand to use because like eight ninths, nine tenths of the time it flops an underpair to a higher board. So it's just, an, it flops horribly. So basically, turning this into a three bet bluff is awful. You obviously can't three bet it for value. I would just flat because the guy's a weaker player and the guy behind is not squeezing a lot. I wouldn't normally flat fours out of the blinds, but I'd award like plus three for finding this flat call here, because it's a really nice flat, just for implied odds. You don't want to blow up the pot here with minimal fold equity um, out of position with fours. If you want a three bet bluff, I wouldn't three bet bluff this guy to start with, because honestly, like he's 34, 19, he's probably not folding enough. But if you were going to three bet bluff, you'd want like blockers, you'd want like hands with more frequent strength that flop more stuff um, often. Fours is an implied odds mining hand, it's not hand to blow pots without position, without fold, with, at any time, especially without fold equity, so minus five for a three bet here, sorry, I feel bad, but it's really bad hand to use. Um, flatting plus three, folding, folding would be like zero, I guess, it's like a kind of obvious choice, but I think you can find the flat here that's marginally better than that. And just because it's marginally better doesn't mean that I'm only going to award like one point more, because that means that finding it is even harder. And then like we get flatted, we get a6-5, um, here comes the big bad minus 5, oh no. On a6-5, I don't mind a check fold here because your equity is so, so poor. So I'm just going to say plus 1 for a check fold, minus 1 for a c-bet. Your equity is really bad. Uh, that said though, it is a board that you 
can get fold equity on, but also you're likely to get the showdown here against a passive player. That's one benefit, I guess, of being against a passive with showdown value that you'll be able to realize it when he has like king queen. I would just fold the turn here plus one for that because you just don't have enough equity plus pop plus fold equity to continue here out of position. Plus one if you make this fold. Good. At minus five is going to take some coming back from, but I'm sure we'll get there because we just had plus ten in a row. So yeah, don't use that hand as a 3-bit bluff at the best of times, and certainly not against a fish. Lesson learned, I'll stop going on about that. Queen 8, um, pretty light ISO, I think I'd have to award minus points for the ISO with two aggro regs behind us, yeah, it'd be like minus 2 or 3 actually, the fold is good, plus 1 for the fold, because it's not a favourable spot to ISO. And by the way, I'm trying to be objective with this at all times, I don't care how many points I've just awarded you, positive or negative, I'm going to be completely impartial to that and basically try to just award it as if every hand is, is a new hand, which it is. So like if I've just given you minus 11 for being really dumb, or, <laughs> that's really harsh, if I've given you minus 11 for making a terrible, awful, horrendous mistake, then I'm not going to start giving you plus points when you don't deserve the next, just so you guys know. I'm going to try and make it fair, basically, across the board this show. It's a harsh show, but the poker is harsh, and you need thick skin to be able to learn and improve and put your ego aside. And I'm like that with my students anyway, you know, I'm direct with them. I don't call them dumb. That was kind of like a, a slip. I think it's because I've been playing so much League of Legends, I just shout at my team because that game infuriates me. So I'm in this mode of calling people stupid. It's really bad. It's a really horrible thing to do. But yeah, that game can be so frustrating. Love it, but it's so frustrating. Anyway, um, so yeah, I'm not going to be giving anyone treat special treatment because they just got awarded minus 15. Like you're still going to get minus 8 in the next hand if you deserve it. And if you've been running really good, with your decisions and making really good choices, you're still going to get positive points. So it's going to be completely um, as fair as possible. Um, we check that flop, which I think is reasonable. We don't really have enough equity for plus fold equity for a lead there. So I think plus one for that. Some people lead there, but three way against really big fish, like you're just not going to have enough fold equity. So don't do it. You need a bit more pot equity to lead there. Queen five and the cutoff, we go for three at two point five x, which is fine. Flop's an easy check. Plus one for finding that. Some people would bet there, um, but definitely you have stable showdown value and you want to pot control, so plus one and a call is very obvious, so no points for a call on this turn. And on the river, I think a value bet is in order if he checks, and I would make it. Um, do you want to raise there? It's 20 off, and you have an ace? No, probably not. Probably just call. I don't think a raise gets called by enough worse, so plus one for calling the river and not raising. Cool. So that was a nice little streak. Nice hand. Unfortunate with the result, but that's going to happen. 10 9 of suit under the gun. I like that open. It's not a standard open to make actually, so I think because I think that's plus EB and other plus ones in order. So we're recouping all those minus fives really fast here. Or well, that one minus five, I should say. And on this board, definitely three way here with two um, somewhat weaker players. I don't hate a C bet, but I don't think it's good either. I'm just going to say checking is. Yeah, checking's probably plus one. I don't think a C-bet's good here being three-way, so I like the flop check. Oh, we don't make the flop check. Minus one, then. I just think the three-handed with a couple of fish in the pot, your fold equity's limited, your pot equity's not but not good enough. If you had, like, ace-king or like, ace-jack or just a bit more equity, like, I wouldn't mind it. If you had, like, two, two overcards more often to the pocket pairs and you had, like, an overcard to the queen or something, it would be okay, but you don't even have that, so... Giving up in the turn is definitely standard and fine. You'll get a point for it. It's just an obvious, obvious choice, I think. You have to add all these up soon. Maybe I'll start doing that now so I don't have to stall at the end of the video. No, we'll do it at the end. It's more more suspense that way. I'll just pause while I do it. Or maybe I'll like put myself under pressure and try and add them up really fast. Yeah, that shouldn't be too difficult. Like I'd like to think my mental arithmetic is quite good, so hopefully adding 1s, 2s, 3s, 4s and 5s together should be not too much trouble. If it was, I would have to question my position as a poker instructor for sure. So I think we'll have a bash at that ourselves. Let's just go for it. Stick our neck out with that one. So we face under the gun open here on table 4, and the guy is folding to 3 bets, I think that's 79%, is that what that stat is? Yeah, I think that's fold to 3 bets, so against this guy, definitely 3 bets this hand. I think that's what the stat is, I could be totally wrong, and in which case this 
these points will not be uh, awarded fairly. But I'm assuming the, the high number that comes after the low number in 3-bet is fold 3-bet. So we should really get that straight first off, right off the bat. Um, so against a guy with a really high fold to 3-bet, who's probably opening fairly wide from under the gun, 23-20, I would definitely 3-bet King-Queen as a polar bluff with two very good blockers. Um, and so three points for finding this 3-bet. If you call minus 3, it's a really bad call, I think, from the small blind. And if you fold minus 1. Yeah, I think you want a bluffing range against someone who's who's opening fairly wide and folding that much, for sure. Just going to 1.5x, I like against a nitty looking big blind, that's not my general size. I definitely see that here, I mean, you've got like one over card back there, straight draw. Board's fairly dry, it's going to be fine. I'll give plus one for that whole hand because the sizing pre was good and then the C bet was good and the sizing was good. I've lost my timer. Okay, so we have four minutes left to make some more balling decisions. You're gonna have to like pull out the stops here to get an immense positive score. I want some plus tens in the next few minutes. Let's do it. Uh, yeah, good set nine for sure. I think pretty obvious though. I don't think it deserves a point just because you've got another fish behind you and stuff. Kind of annoying flop because we do flop some equity, but not really that much. Um, go for a check here really quickly. I don't really like it. Hold on, we're in a cut off here, right? Yeah, I would bet you need to protect your hand basically, and it's a decent semi bluff, and you have equity when called. Like if you check here, it's not horrible, but I think that you just give away like so much equity to overcards here. Like when preflop raiser checks, he just has two overs a lot. And button can also just have two overcards. It can be four different overcards against you. You actually have the best hand pretty frequently here. You want to protect that. You can even get called by ace high that has a gut shot and get value, and you can protect your equity and even turn your hand into a bluff on later street. So I bet there would have been like plus two or three. I'm gonna to have to say minus one for the check on that flop. You don't want to be check calling against the fish as well. I mean, you've got fish to act after. You would you rather bet and get called by his ace high and stuff, or would you rather check and just? put money into the pot against better hands because surely we're not folding there. Same on the turn, you got better for protection. There's four over cards out against you. Minus, oh, minus two for that. Like, it's even more important now. You have the best hand just so, so often when it checks twice there. Got to bet that turn. Got to protect that equity. There's four over cards. There's one of them. This makes someone the best hand like 30, 40% of the time. It's pretty grim. And now, like, we quickly call here. I don't even know that I like it. Like, this is a value bet a lot. I don't hate it either. Going to award zero for this call. You have a player threat behind that kind of hit the jack, and you can actually. I just don't think you have the best hand super often. Yeah, I'm going to award minus one actually for that call. Sorry. I just think that. Not because he had a better hand, just because I think that. Like. No, oh, actually, am I? No, random fish do. Like, there's a guy behind you, though. This is the problem. Like, you don't just have to beat that guy. You have to beat the guy behind you as well. I just don't think it's a bluff that often with that sizing. Yeah, minus one. I'm sorry, man. It's going to have to be. So, yeah, the protection we lost. Three points in that hand by not protecting our equity, so that's definitely a big thing and something you should look at. Like the reasons to bet are, although you can get called by worse and you can get better at the fold, that's very true. Well, you can get called by worse on the flop actually because Ace High has a gutter and it's going to call you some amount. But generally, you got to protect your equity there because you let a card roll off to four different over cards. Someone hits it, um, whereas on the turn you have the best hand so so frequently that you that you just need to bet for value and protection there. Um, Button three bets, it's cold to you. Guy three bets, eight percent. Don't mind a cold four bit bluff here with King Jack. It'd be okay, but also be like, I'll give you a point if you find that. But it would also be okay to fold because you don't want to be like going too wide here with your range. So, one minute left to make the magic happen. And we'll see what our first score is for the Carrot Show's very brave debut contender, Jeff. Thank you very much to Jeff for sending in this video and for, for stepping up to the plate and being the first one to actually get their game scrutinised to such a level that they're getting positive and negative points awarded to them. Like, it's definitely... Like, if coaching was like that, it would be, like, a really unpleasant experience, I would think, because your coach is, like, minus five, minus five, like, scoring you all the time. It's like being in school. Everyone hates quiz day when you're not good at the subject. And let's face it, we're not all great at poker, but otherwise we wouldn't be getting coached and stuff like that. I'm not even great at poker, I'm just like more experienced than the people I teach. That's the way I see it, because it's such a difficult game that you can always improve at. And like I remember in school, like if it was a subject I hated, 
having to do a, a test that was just like the most annoying thing. So I bet it's a bit like that. And it would be horrible if coaching was like that. So coaching is not like this. It's not like minus five points, bad. But I will say to people, you know, you can really improve here by doing X and Y. And don't sugarcoat things, but definitely awarding points is not the best way to teach people by putting them under constant stress and pressure. So, yeah. That's why I say don't take the competitive points element of this show to heart. It's basically for fun. The instructional part is the fun, the main thing. Okay, going to wrap up there and we're going to tally up Jeff's total. So, let's see how he's done. So, we have... Plus three, plus two, plus five. Yeah, I'll pause the video. That's going to take me like like thirty seconds of me not of you not wanting to listen to me actually ramble on and do that. And I'll be back with a score. And we're back with Jeff's final score for episode one of the Carrot Show, and his score comes in at an impressive debut performance of plus twelve. So. Well done, positive score right off the bat, more good decisions than bad ones, and definitely main areas to work on would be protecting your equity, um, thinking about when to 3-bet pull or with what hands to take advantage of fold equity there, and also just evaluating how much equity you need before you make a call and just seeing if you have that much equity against your opponent's range when you're facing like a river bet or all-in, and all the other stuff, the more minor things that I mentioned in the video as well. Thank you very much to Jeff for taking part in the first ever episode of The Carrot Show. I'll be back next week with episode number two. If you have any feedback, comments, or questions, let me know. And if you'd like to be on the show, um, send me a link to a video that I can download um, of the same kind of quality with the HUD visible tiled tables that we looked at there with Jeff's one. So see you guys next time. Hope you enjoyed. And that's all from The Carrot Show for this week. <laughs>